Hi folks, welcome back uh, to my channel. And uh, once again, I want to continue with the series on the Bendro Polaris. Uh, today I want to uh, discuss the focus stacking capabilities. Now, one of the things that uh, I've found about uh, all kinds of focus stacking is that focus stacking really becomes uh, appropriate for uh, macro, close-up, uh, and that type of photography when you're using things like a focusing rail or an automated uh, electronic focusing system like the Bendro Polaris, uh, like another product that I have been using in the past called the Stackshot. Now, one of the things that you need to be cautious of is that when you are doing any kind of focus stacking, that A, you're aware of the magnification factor of your lens, you're aware of the closest focusing distance, which gives you the, the maximum uh, magnification, and also the fact that your depth of field will be dependent upon uh, your, your focus distance and your magnification. Now, as far as landscape photography is concerned, it's much easier to define and determine uh, the focus points uh, based upon what your aperture is at and what your subject matter focus distance is at. Uh, and, and to the most extent, uh, not just that, but also it's based upon the focal length of your lens. So I will link to a video above and also put it down in the description below of uh, you know focus stacking as it pertains to calculating the distances and how much uh, stacking you need to do. For macro work, uh, since your depth of field is typically going to be extremely small, uh, you can do your focus stacks in repeatable increments and, and get your stacking done that way. Now let's get to a couple of issues that I found with the Bendro Polaris. Number one, uh, the nomenclature uh, as defined focusing from near to far and from far to near means that you, when you want to focus near to far, means that you're focusing at the closest point or the subject matters uh, area of focus that you want closest to the uh, sensor. And far means it's far from the sensor. That's what I understand. Conversely, far to near means you'd start at the far end and focus gradually inwards coming to the near end. Uh, the way the software works for me on my system, on my camera and my lenses, is absolutely the opposite. Near to far works far to near and far to near works near to far. Uh, not a big deal as long as you're aware of that and take that into consideration. The next thing that uh, you need to be aware of is that, uh, yes, Benro does define compatibility being an important factor. But I found the best way to check to see if your camera lens system is compatible with focus stacking is to take your lens that is an autofocus capable lens and switch your camera to manual focusing. And then use your uh, Benro app on your iPhone or Android to physically move the focus points by tapping on the focusing uh, buttons, which I will show you uh, on the iPhone. Now, if you find that your lens works, it's focusing uh, based upon your tapping the uh, you know, small increments and large increments, uh, you are in a good position, your lens and camera will work just fine. If it doesn't, uh, then you need to find another lens that is capable of responding to the Benro Polaris app. Though Benro has stated that you can have your camera in autofocus or in manual focus, I have found that focus stacking works best with the lens and camera system set to manual focus. And I did a couple of tests to see how this works and what these increments are. Uh, 
And again, going back to what I said before, is that if you are looking to focus for macro or for close-ups, then you want to actually define how much the step factor is based upon what Bendro provides you. Now, they give you step factors from one to a hundred. Um, it's fine. I mean, that's not typically, you know, the level of accuracy that you're going to be looking for. But what I did was I set up the, my camera system with a macro lens and it's a one-to-one -one macro. I set the macro lens to its closest focusing distance. And really what I wanted to see is that if I was to set a 50 increment of uh, movement, what would it do? If I was to set a 100 uh, increment, what would it do? So let's just look at the setup. The setup for determining the travel that the Polaris provides, the lens, uh, on these three experiments that I'm doing are on the setup of a Panasonic S5 Mark II and riding on the Polaris. And then on the table, I have a ruler and the ruler has got centimeter graduations uh, lit up using two loom cube lights, one on either side, uh, and that's it. So the last uh, experiment is really uh, placing uh, these dice uh, 30 centimeters apart um, in a triangular pattern so that we can see the focusing as it progresses through uh, this formation. So let's look at the images uh, from the first set, which is a step factor of 100, 20 images uh, with the focus point at the closest focusing distance that I was able to achieve at f2.8. So let's look at the first image. <clears throat> As you can see that uh, the focus is uh, between the uh, one short of 10 uh, millimeter marker. And uh, we can now step through uh, very quickly. As you can see, the focus is moving approximately one to one and a half uh, millimeters each time. So by the time we get to 10, we've just crossed over the uh, 20 millimeter mark. And then by the time we get to the very last image, we are at 40 millimeters. So a total distance of 30 millimeters. Uh, so from 10 to 40, is what the step factor of 100 was able to achieve. Now, <clears throat> if we look at the uh, next one, which is the 50 uh, step factor, which is a small effect step factor, and also 20 images, starting at the same point, uh, by the time we get to the 10th image, as you can see, we are halfway so we've actually done about five and a half to six millimeters of distance. And if we go all the way uh, to the 20th image, we are a little over, actually two millimeters over the 20 millimeter mark. So it's not perfectly linear, but close enough. So uh, judging by this and by the uh, distances that you can achieve, through this method, uh, it's uh, you know conceivable that you would be able to very closely evaluate what kind of step factor you need to do uh, any kind of focus stacking. So in this last one, what I did was um, I lowered the camera to be at level so that there was you know no uh, deviation based upon the angle of uh, the the way the lens was facing. Uh, the subject and the ruler is still there and what I've done is I've placed these dice at increments of 30 
um, centimeters, uh, so 30, 30 millimeters each. So dice one is at zero, dice two is at 30, dice three is at 60, and so on and so forth. And the, the step factor that I used was the same 100. Um, but this time, the, the objects are at about two feet from the lens. So it's not at the closest focusing distance, it's at about two feet. So if we look at the first image, you can see uh, that the first dice is uh, in perfect focus. The second image, the second one is coming into focus. By the third one, it is in focus. And as we move forward through each of them, as you can see, by the time we get to the 11th image, we are at sharp focus on the sixth dice. And given this evaluation, we can now say that if I had a subject that was about two feet away from my lens, I could evaluate a hundred step factor and judging by the width, front to back width of the subject, I could calculate how many shots I need and do um, the stack. Now there is one other thing that I do want to mention that in the Benro app, there is a preview section. And if you were to use the preview function without taking images, the Benro app will let the Benro Polaris step the camera through all of the steps. And if it reaches the end and you are comfortable with that, then you can you know, evaluate how many images you used. If it didn't, doesn't reach the end, you can add incremental images. If it overshoots it, then you can reduce the number of images. So with that, I'll just show you the, the last one that we did. So this is the final setup with a, uh, a gone past Astro Maria with uh, two loom cubes on uh, platypod goosenecks and two platypod ultras supporting the lights. Uh, the flower is underlit and lit from one side and a little behind. Uh, once again, the camera setup is the same. The Lumix uh, S5 Mark II with a Sigma macro lens and riding on the Polaris. And the Polaris basically going to control the uh, camera and lens to do the focus stack. Based upon the last experiment where we used the dice, uh, it was possible to determine how much you needed as far as the number of images based upon using a uh, step factor of 100 to cover the width or the depth of field of this particular flower. So that was about seven images that um, I had figured out, but it turned out to be closer to six images. So from front to back at a uh, factor of 100 and using exactly the same f2.8 on the macro lens at about two feet from the sensor, uh, the flower was uh, captured as you know seven stacked images which are here let me just quickly show those to you as you can see here the the front is in focus uh, now the midsection comes into focus now the we're getting into the rear and finally uh, you can see that this one has only a small area at the very back in the center of the flower that is in focus so we can select all of these images and bring them into Photoshop and actually do a stack. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's we go to Photo, Edit in, and open as layers in Photoshop. Photoshop opens and all the uh, layers will come in. This, this won't take too long. And actually, just to to save time, I'm not even going to do an auto align. Let's see how it works. Let me select all the images and then go into edit and do an auto blend layers with the the stack images checked and basically seamless stones and colors 
and doing a content aware fill if you so want to and hit OK. And it's done. So those six images have now resulted in an image that is sharp front to back. And that's really the, the whole purpose of doing focus stacking for macro photography. So that's all about the focus stacking capabilities of the Bendro Polaris system. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode. And if you have, please do give me a thumbs up, a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I look forward to having you as a member of my channel. And uh, more importantly, if there are any questions, uh, please put them in the comments uh, section below. And if there's anything else in particular that you'd like me to cover for the Bendro Polaris, uh, do let me know that also. I'll be doing a few more videos, but if there's anything specific that you're looking for, uh, let me know. So with that, uh, take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye for now.